One in six people worldwide experience infertility. That is 17.5% of the adult population, and yet many do not even receive care that they actually need. So joining us today is Barbara Kalura. She is the president and CEO of Resolve, and Dr. Sasmira Lawani, Senior Director of Medical Affairs, Reproductive Medicine with Faring Pharmaceuticals. And they are both here to discuss infertility and what can be done to help. Thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thanks Thank for you. having us. Now, what exactly is infertility and when should someone talk to a physician if they are unable to get pregnant? Thank you for the question, Lisa. So infertility is a disease. It occurs in one to six people, as you said, worldwide, and it occurs more commonly than we think it does. So what are the causes of infertility? It could be related to female factors such as you know, dysfunction with ovulation or having blocked tubes. It could be related to male factors, it could be a combination of both male and female factors. And in some cases, we just don't know why they have the infertility. It's like unexplained. Mm -hmm. So when should one go ahead and see our uh, healthcare provider? It's after trying for one year, not being able to conceive. And that's when the female partner is less than 35 years of age. If she's greater than 35 years of age, do we go ahead and then shorten the duration to six months? And the reason for doing that is with advancing female age, fertility declines. One should also take into consideration, you know, uh, the medical history, reproductive history, and sexual history. Why isn't there a one-size-fits-all approach to family building? I mean, uh, it's a great question because you hear a story about somebody and you think, okay, that's the care that I'll, I'll go ahead and get. What I like to say is you need a sperm and you need an egg and you need a uterus. You need all three to be healthy and operating at peak performance for a pregnancy and a live birth. Any one of those could be impacted and have issues or a combination of the three. So you really need to think about this in the most personalized way possible. You also have people who might need care because they're going through a cancer diagnosis and they wanna freeze their sperm or their egg before they go through that cancer diagnosis so they can have children later in life. I like to say this is literally the most personalized, a personalized medicine. You really need that really clear diagnosis. And then you have to think about what's right for you and your family and how you wanna proceed. And why must working to increase access to fertility care for everyone need to take center stage, especially now more than ever? Well, we're talking in our country right now about protecting IVF and keeping IVF legal, and we need to do that. We need to do that at the federal level and the state level. But I also want to say that people don't have enough access and not enough insurance coverage for IVF, comprehensive care. That's something we advocate for all the time. That's been um, something we have um, fought for. This is what we hear over and over and over, the biggest barrier to building your family. So we do that at the federal level. We do that at the state level. Employers can voluntarily add coverage. It's a great way to recruit talent, to retain your employees. So we wanna see many more people have access to all the family building options, and we do that through comprehensive health insurance. And where can we go to learn more information? So there are good trusted resources like resolve.org. Faring has its uh, fertility out loud and go to your healthcare provider to get the trusted, correct information. Thank you to both of you for being with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you You're for welcome. covering this story. We really appreciate it. Thank you.